Hey, I'm Krista Wax. You're listening to MSB Sound on KFAI. I'm so excited to have Graveyard Club with me again. Hey. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for being here. I know it's been a couple months since y'all we talked, but uh, why don't you both take a second, introduce yourselves. Sure. I'm Amanda. I'm one of the singers and I play bass as well. And I'm Michael. I play guitar. Wonderful. It's so exciting to have you here. I think the last time we talked was October and it was just before Halloween. And I know you're kind of like, we don't really want to be a Halloween band and you're not, you're beyond that, but you were on the Halloween show. I have to know because it was a lot of fun. And so how are things going? You've since had brand new album, Moonflower just came out. So what's kind of, what else has been happening since then? Just wrapping up the album and yeah, it's been super exciting. I feel like it's a long time coming, like a lot of bands during COVID, like things got shaken up. So we recorded a lot of it at home and over a long stretch of time. So like, it's just feels really good to finally have this out in the world, and getting some like pre-orders rolling in quite Definitely. a few pre-orders, which is really exciting um, of, of the vinyl, obviously the album's out, but the vinyl is not as with. Yeah, the vinyl delays vinyl. have meant like a year out for that, but um, that's yeah. kind of everybody almost it seems like. But yeah, on top of that, just getting to play the songs live has been fun. You no, know, yes. after those couple years off with the pandemic, in full force it's been so fun the last like you know six months to a year to play more shows and to road test so to speak a lot of the new songs yeah uh, which we'll be doing at the release show uh, playing a lot of songs that we've never played before so super excited for that yeah I'm really excited that's awesome remind me about your journey to get to this album coming out was it a lot of it in process before COVID or was it you were all kind of working on it during or kind of a combo, I guess. Oh, definitely a combo. Uh, our single Valens we released in, I think, late spring 2020. And that is on the album. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of our demo process. So that tells you a lot about how long it took. Yeah. Um, a lot of it was very, I think Valens, that first single before anybody knew what the pan pandemic was, uh, we did record with our longtime producer and engineer, Andy Thompson, in person in his home studio. Yeah. And from there, we almost did everything else remotely, or we would just kind of go in and little like kind of quarantined little uh, shifts of like a drum session, isolated one at a time or something. So it was a labor of love over the course of two years and a lot of DIY. Um, but it did, I think it produced our best record yet. You wouldn't know from the sound of it that it was yeah, like Done DIY right. or right. like yeah, piecemeal or anything like that. So yeah. It was unique though. I'm really proud of it. That's awesome. It is incredible. I never would have guessed that it is DIY. I feel like yeah. all of you artists putting out music around that time or you know, just doing those shifts of how do we get this out here? How do we do a safe show? How do we do yeah. all these things? Like that's that's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like we recorded at home, but then like we send the tracks off to Andy and he does magical things to them to make them yeah. sound like not so, I don't know. Right. Production and mixing and mastering yeah. plays a very important part in that For process. Sure. So we can only screw it up so badly. <laughs> we just bought nice mics basically yeah, nice microphones for sure help yeah <laughs> yes good equipment that's always a good thing <laughs> I think we might have talked about this a little bit last time too but I think my favorite part of recording like DIY I guess was like you can do so many takes <laughs> like I feel like in the studio there's either like a monetary issue or like you're kind of on the clock or like the producer has something in mind. And so you're kind of, you know, there's just this other party, but when it's like just you in that basement and you're like doing all the takes you want, I feel like some kind of like weirder stuff came out that I maybe wouldn't have necessarily done if we had been in the studio. Like there's this part at the end of Halloween that I like fully belt and I, I don't know. I just don't know if I would have had like the guts to try that in the studio because like the first few were a little rough, but then I kind of found it and it like ended up being my favorite part. And Andy texted me and was like, that sounds awesome. So 
it, you know, it's like uh, with constraint comes, you know, creativity. Right. Absolutely. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. I know. It's like, what is kind of the difference between doing this and studio aside from just like, I'm at home and I'm just rocking out here in our practice space. But wow, we had to really just take that extra oomph and just be like, what else can I do with this? I can do as whatever I want, how long I want to do this. Kinda, yeah, well, it's like was, a free for all. <laughs> yeah. right? I was saying uh, in a different conversation that a sort of a blessing in disguise with that process is it's so different in not having the same like time frame of like, we have a budget and a timeline, we're going into this studio and we have these 10 songs, this is what we're laying down we don't have room to explore maybe quite as much right. um, versus this experience because there was no clear timeline and it was so DIY and open-ended, it sort of allows some of the best stuff to kind of come to light over a longer course of time. Whereas like um, yeah. we mentioned Valens being on the early end, there was other songs on the later end of the writing process that were like a full two years later almost that if this was a regular, quote unquote, regular process, we wouldn't have had the time or patience to wait that many years. And I think because of that, like involuntary patience, <laughs> you get on our album, I really feel like 10 incredibly cohesive, strong songs. Like there's no fat. It's just like, we are very proud of those 10 songs that are on this new album um, across the board. And I think, uh, it's I think it's our best album yet but that's my opinion <laughs> I'm biased yeah totally <laughs> I love it I, I haven't always felt that way when a new album comes out like oh this is better than the last like there's always like old favorites or something but I feel like this one I'm just like 100% like yep this is it Amanda hates all of her other work <laughs> no, I, uh, change is hard you know sometimes you yeah. like the old tunes <laughs> right. sure. oh that's awesome that's yeah, I mean, it sounds like <laughs> as awful as the pandemic was for musicians and everyone during that time, you did find a way to make it work. And yeah, I mean, of course, a lot more will come out when you're able to take that extra time instead of saying this weekend, we're going to go, we're going to record it, we're going to knock it. I'm sorry, maybe that's that's a strong couple, a weekend. I don't know, probably <laughs> takes a little bit longer than a weekend to record an album. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really great that you were able to have that time and work through it and finesse and right just really enjoy like what you put out instead of being like oh crap like <laughs> uh, this could have been better and of course I'm not talking about anything of yours I'm just talking about conversations <laughs> I've had with other people <laughs> sure. yeah. so with that and then okay so the vinyl <laughs> is on back on not back order but delays yeah. with vinyl pressing um uh, when are you expecting that to come out then i mean tentatively february we have cds we have it digitally it's on all the streaming services of course um but yeah vinyl production i've heard all kinds of crazy stuff like adele went to the front of the line and just made a gigantic order of vinyl and slowed everybody else down or just like there's so few uh vinyl pressing plants left that they're just all slammed because it's become so popular again. So I know I've ordered like very famous major label artists records and it's been like numerous emails reminding me like it's delayed or it's delayed further. So I'm reluctant to put a date on it. We've on our band camp, it says February, 2023. Uh, but that's like a projection that is kind of out of our control. Um, an option we had was to wait to release it till the vinyl is ready, but that just feels like we had been sitting on this record for a little while anyway. Yeah. And I just wanted to get it out there. Like after a while, you, you'd start to like, some of the magic can fade if you, you just been like keeping it secret for too long. So yeah, it just felt like, you know what? Hopefully our fans are patient. Our fans were incredibly patient uh, during uh, the thick of COVID mm -hmm. in terms of not getting to see us live. Um, they were still so supportive in terms of social media engagement and, and buying merch so mm -hmm. um, it's been cool to see how many people did buy it pre-sale knowing that they do have to wait a while and hopefully yeah. they're not over it by the time it actually physically arrives <laughs> it's really cool it has a cool splatter it's yeah, gonna be nice worth the wait for that splatter, splatter. Yeah. <laughs> cool look oh gosh is that pre-order sold out now i want to <laughs> no there's you can get more <laughs> okay <laughs> 
I'm a sucker for all the fun, like cool vital that comes out. Like, oh, it's pink. Great. I'm there. It has glitter on it. Yes. Uh, I love that. Yeah. I know that's really interesting that that's uh, become such a delay. I mean, I can think of a, a major label artist too who has their own like vinyl press so that there has been no delays with their. Oh, dang. Releases. Wow. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that is still an issue. And that is, of course, and it delegates in the way. Mm-hmm. What on earth? Bizarre. <laughs> You're right. But that's exciting. Yes, people can still get it streaming digitally, CD, yeah. multiple ways. But yes, no, it's still fun to have it. I know I have one of your earlier releases on vinyl and I love that. So yeah. thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And you have an upcoming release show. Yeah. Come Fine. along with everything. <laughs> Yeah, we're playing uh, Saturday, July 30th at the Fine Line. Aaron Rice is opening. He's great. Uh, That's where we actually held our last release show. Super fun. And we have tickets left, so you should go grab some of those. Yes. Um, And we have some special sort of, I don't know what the word is, special tricks up our sleeve for the show, um, including incorporating a choir that Amanda sort of coordinated and arranged some parts for to feature on some of our songs. Yeah, we're partnering with Kip and Kin Choir, or I guess it's like part of that choir because it's kind of their off season. So it was the kind of the available members. Um, But that worked out too, because we're, you know, a full band. So you can't actually fit like 60 bodies on the stage, even if you wanted to. So a smaller version of Kip and Kin Choir um Rachel Rise is the director and she's amazing um so yeah I've I'm kind of like living out one of my long-held dreams <laughs> over the last few months of getting to like arrange our music for a choir to sing along to and I like did all the sheet music and recorded some audio tracks of the parts so that it would be like easier for the choir to kind of pick it up quickly and learn and we just had our rehearsal with them um I guess when you're listening to this a week ago, but anyway, it was super exciting and just kind of hearing it come together. I like fully got goosebumps multiple times. I was like, oh my gosh, it's, it's here. So I'm really excited about that. And it's been cool because it's also allowed between like the new album of songs, we just haven't been able to fit into set lists yet. Yeah. And and also now having the choir join on for this show, it's opened up some new additions to our set list where we're playing things where maybe it was like a quieter song that in the past didn't quite feel right in the setting or didn't quite have the oomph that we wanted it to because of you know production things and versus live so having that choir add an extra few layers into our sound has opened up some fun possibilities within like what we could do in our set that yeah i'm excited to excited to see happen live I feel like we're really getting a lot of use out of them too. Like we're like, of course, adding lots of harmonies. There's like my part, Matt's part. Sometimes they split into four parts on top of that. Um, there's moments too, where they're kind of providing like the, the chord sort of. Um, and then there's other times where they're kind of just like belting in unison. So it's, it's going to be like a really interesting, like you won't see something like this again. So this is your chance. <laughs> What an amazing selling point there. That's so <laughs> <laughs> But wow, that's so cool. I have goosebumps when you're talking about just having a choir in and everything. Oh, that must have taken a lot of work to just try to organize all that. And it was a little bit of a labor of love, but I was like very excited and motivated. And like even just the rehearsal like was like enough. I was like, oh yeah, this is worth it. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Amanda's the only one in the band with the musical chops and actual technical know-how to pull anything like that off. The rest of us are just <laughs> completely making it up as we go and fooling people along the way, apparently. It is kind of funny, like writing sheet music for like a, a band, a band band, like a rock band. Like, I feel like it's sort of a world's world collide kind of a feeling. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, that's, that's very rare. Do you have... um? I'm trying to think what movie it was. I feel like there is a movie where someone had, I mean, of course it's fictional movie, but they had personalized. Oh, was it like the wedding singer? I think Drew Barrymore gave Adam Sandler like personalized. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen that movie. I know. <laughs> like, 
it was so rom com. I can't believe I just quoted an Adam Sandler movie no. that would never. <laughs> I feel like the, that movie is underrated. Our, our, <laughs> our singer, Matt, who's not here, obviously, has a nostalgic love of like 90s Adam Sandler movies. I don't know if he'd call it a guilty pleasure or like an unapologetic pleasure. <laughs> I don't know. It's a proud pleasure. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Yeah, she wrote, she wrote something like something cute on the top or maybe just his name at the top and then had like she music so that's not really a thing I guess is what I'm I'm asking and what I'm hearing is that's not what people do yeah. <laughs> um yes that movie is a total guilty pleasure of mine that's why I love the soundtrack uh anyways back to your show instead um well that's so cool that just sounds like just so fun that you're able to share this music with everyone live again and celebrate the new release and have just a choir come in. I I'm trying to think of the last time I saw a choir come in or, you know, extra singers like that for any kind of a performance, especially a rock show. So that's, that's so exciting. That's so cool. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. yeah we're obviously pretty excited. Yeah. All right. Well, that show is Saturday, July 30th at the fine line with Aaron Rice. No album, Moonflower. That's awesome. And after this, there's just kind of a, a little break. Well, I guess so. I mean, you've been through a lot. You've done a lot over the last couple of years. So just a little break for the band. Yeah, we. Um, I think we do have one other show um, early fall or late summer that's not announced yet. Um, but I think, you know, a lot happens over the course of the years we've been in a band, whether it's, um, you know, family things or just different career things. And we've all become very busy. We've been a band for, I think, going on eight years, which seems wild. But, um, you know, it's, I think, I don't, we never, we don't know what the right word for this is. It's not like we're breaking up and trying to be coy about it. Um, but it might be some radio silence between social media and playing live and, and uh, output for a while. So I think on that note, um, we're not going to just disappear entirely. But if you've been putting off seeing us and want to, I would say our release show would be a really good time to do that. Otherwise, it might be a while. Oh. <laughs> Little. It sounds like a real like selling, <laughs> selling manipulation thing. Like we just play a show one week later. Like that was all just a ploy. Right. <laughs> yeah. We will not be this, this choir again. So it's, it's going to be a really special show. Absolutely. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. So multiple reasons to check it out. Yeah. And just celebrate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's not going to be a world tour announced after that like surprise we're going nothing the book. <laughs> no, no. not yet <laughs> all right well thanks so much for joining me and congrats again on the new release and getting the choir in and organizing that that sounds so cool and oh my gosh have fun at the release show i think i'm gonna have to go get my ticket and get that vinyl now too yeah oh, thanks thank, so much thank Kristen. you appreciate it yeah thanks